It's a very important question. What will the role of Europe be in the next 10 to 15 years? Um, it's not clear at the moment because at the moment Europe is undergoing a huge level of crisis and just if I may do the negative possibility first, um, what I fear is the attempt to save the euro may actually put the whole of Europe at risk because the type of uh, fiscal demands that are going to be made essentially restrict the autonomy especially of the southern uh, eurozone members. And in that case, I fear social unrest, I fear breakup, and I fear populist revolt. Um, and I could easily see Eurosceptic parties emerging in, in Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, that actually want out from the whole system and want to take the benefits of devaluation. And I can also see protests from the right in the north, where they're saying, why on earth should we pay for, for this type of settlement? So I think the negative, the fearful scenario in the future is genuinely disturbing. You know, Europe is internally divided and is facing real threats on its borders from kind of the breakdown of states uh, in North uh, Africa and the rise, again, the, the instability on, with Russia in the East. But let me do a positive scenario. What I think is most interesting is the elite are committed to saving the euro, which for me is a, pro a commitment to saving Europe. No European wants to go back to being mere nation states again. And I think if Europe can in some sense solve the economic issue of the eurozone, um, and I'm one who thinks actually we need the EU but not the Eurozone. I think if they can solve that, then I think Europe can come together in a way that should give it the type of global leverage and future that it needs. What it has to do is recognise the old solutions are no longer applicable, that capitalism has fundamentally changed, welfareism has fundamentally changed. It's got to recognise the scale of the problem, rebuild its welfare, rebuild its education networks. And actually, if you go back to 1945, when after a disastrous war, millions dead, uh, institutions shattered, from 45 to the, the late 1960s, Europe underwent a golden age. And that beca that's because it renamed a common vision and a common purpose. You had growth rates of 6%, for example, in Italy. And that's because it brought together all the institutions around the notion of common purpose, pension funds, education, and universities. We need to do that again. So really, I think, if we can do that, if we can solve, solve those problems and create a new bottom-up Europe rather than a top-down Europe, then a bottom-up Europe that has political legitimacy, and I support direct elections to, uh, for a European president, uh, an elected uh, commission, and a parliament that does away with the Council of Ministers, then we have an economic renewal and democratic renewal running together. And then Europe, I really think, can be and will be the centre of the world. Because again, just to be very clear, what other parts of the world has had such a cultural production? What other parts of the world has achieved so much in such a short area? I mean, in a certain way, the cultural product, uh, production of Belgium is equal to that of the United States in terms of the great, the geniuses, the painters they produce. And Europe has more cultural value, I think, per square mile than anywhere else in the world. And I think the future of economic exchange is the integration of that cultural value with economic value. And I think if we can solve our problems, which requires a hard look, then I think there's every possibility for Europe in the future being a centre of world power and also of a vision of how humans should live.